This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Talk about what's next for Mike Rotundo. He goes from being the Wall Street guy to the tax guy. He's going to debut as Erwin R. Scheister or the IRS. It's a pretty silly gimmick, but man, it's still probably his most iconic run. His first real push in the company happens at the Royal Rumble in 92. He goes 28 minutes, which is actually the third longest on that show behind Roddy Piper and the guy who would ultimately win and become world champ, Ric Flair. And his path with you uh, crosses again in WrestleMania 9. Yeah. Out of all the places that you would run across him, considering the way he had sort of been up and down and all over the place with uh, Jim Crockett and WCW, he's wrestling against Hulk Hogan here. Of course, he's got Ted DiBiase on his side, and they're going to be taking on Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Hulk Hogan. But anytime you're at a WrestleMania working against Hulk Hogan, Man, you're uh, you're about as high up on the card as you can get, right? Yeah, you landed on your feet pretty well, you know, Mike, and deservedly so. I thought the team of DiBiase and IRS were excellent. I really did, uh, and I still do. Teddy provided what Mike was a little bit short on, uh, and Mike, you know, added a, a significant element. You can't get in the ring with DiBiase and not be really good because he's, he was so damn good. Uh, and Mike held his end of that up very, very well. So I had, I had a good feeling about the long-term success of, uh, the million dollar man and IRS. I like that combination. Let's talk about, uh, what's next here. I guess that's one of the last times we would see Brutus beefcake and that summer Ted DiBiase would retire, uh, but money Inc had a nice little run here. They were yep. time tag champs trading them with the natural disasters and the Steiner brothers. But once, once Ted hangs it up, IRS is back on his own and he's going to start working a program with Razor Ramon for the intercontinental championship. Uh, and they even have a match at the Royal rumble in 94. Meltzer didn't love it. and gave it a star and a half, but still the idea is he's working with Razor Ramon for the IC. So he's in a very good spot, especially where he came from compared to where he came from in WCW. Uh, once Ted DiBiase starts the million dollar corporation, of course, IRS is going to sign up there. He's going to wrestle the undertaker. That's right. The IRS and undertaker had a match at the 1995 Royal rumble. It gets a star and a quarter, uh, heavy on the show though, because, uh, King Kong Bundy is going to be involved and we know they've got plans for them, but man, you take a look at the way he was booked in, in WCW. And now he comes over here and he's working with Hulk Hogan. He's going to be a tag champ. He's going to have some title shots for the IC with Razor Ramon. He's working pay-per-view matches with the undertaker. It's quite a transition from WCW to the WWF. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And it's also very tenuous. Another, another change in direction, another change in creative, another coat of paint on the car. Uh, and again, I think it just continued to, you know, the fact that Mike and Teddy, uh, were a great team within Teddy was at the, at the kind of at the end of his run physically health wise. Uh, at least it seemed that way. I don't know why that team was broken up. I, I have no, I was there, but I wasn't, I wasn't behind the scenes as, as uh, I would eventually end up being. Teddy was hurt. He was retiring. Yeah. I saw the neck or something. He yeah. had issues, but, uh, but it speaks to the bad luck of Mike Rotunda. Right. Another stop in service. Another interruption in service. You got to call the cable company to come fix it. That's always the shits. So, uh, there you go. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. One thing we know for sure is that his impression is left on wrestling today, not only by Bo Dallas, but. Bray Wyatt, who has, you know, become a marquee star and a big time character as the fiend. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about Mike's legacy. What do you think his legacy in wrestling will be? Will it be IRS? Will it be his sons? Will it be the varsity club? He did a lot. Well, for me, it'll be the varsity club because that was my personal favorite of right. his personas. It will not be captain Mike. Uh, I like Michael wall street. 
because I thought the addition to uh, that presentation of Alexander uh, of uh, Alexander York, aka Terry Reynolds, aka Marlena, uh, was uh, a great addition to his pr pr uh, presentation. But to me, he'll just be reliable Mike Rotunda, a company man, first and foremost, who probably was as misbooked as anybody you can think of, Conrad, that stayed around the business that long. You know, I do want to mention, I know sometimes you and I joke about, I got to get my goddamn push and all this nonsense. Yeah. Mike Rotundo, I think, is a, is a great example of a guy who made a very good living for he and his family for decades. And he was able to do it without the almighty push. Because to your point, he was reliable. He was capable. He was dependable. He checked all the boxes when you're wanting to start a wrestling company, as you mentioned earlier, if you were starting a promotion, he would be somebody you, you reached out to. But that doesn't mean that he was on the WrestleMania poster. He didn't have to be in order to provide a very great living for he and his family and really leave a legacy when you consider what his sons are doing in WWE. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're living off dad's uh, DNA, great athleticism and a, and a natural feel for the business. Whether you like their personas or like how they are being booked, irrelevant. Once they're on the job, they've clocked in. You can tell they got the it factor. There's something there, athletically speaking. And they got that from their dad and their grandpa, Black Jack Mulligan. Pretty good genes there, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, uh, I just think there was a lot left on the table for Mike. That, uh, But he was so professional. He was always willing to stay in the hunt. You know, uh, you can't be in the game if you don't have a jersey. So he never turned his jersey in. He was always there, always did great work under the circumstances, especially. So, uh, one of the most respected and reliable talents I ever worked with since I've been in the business. And it was a pleasure always to be around him and to work with him. So, uh, very dry sense of humor, kind of like Dean Malenko. You, you never know what's going to come out of their mouth. And that's for Malenko, you kind of get used to it, but for our, for Rotunda, it's all, it always struck me as really funny because he had a hell of a sense of humor and a great personality in that respect. Right. But, uh, I just, I, I, I really, it was an honor to be around him as long as I had been and, and was, and I'm, I didn't know he was back in WWE. If he is good for him. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.